John, is it? Well, I'm John, born and bred in Brighton. What do you want to know about me? The whole life history? OK. I was born, as I say, born and bred in Brighton, top of Carton Hill. Rough area in them days. Even the police had come up eight-handed. I started an apprenticeship as a plumber. After serving my apprenticeship, I joined the army. I didn't join them, I had to join them. First time I flew on a plane was through the army. Quite looked forward to it until the day it actually happened, which was the day of the Manchester United plane crash in February 1958. First time on a plane, Qantas, New York, nine hours, six hours San Francisco, arrived in Honolulu the next day. What a fantastic place, I'd love to go back. I spent two weeks in Hawaii having a ball. The girls had real grass skirts and not plastic like they've got today. It wasn't a state of America, which it is now, when I arrived there. After two weeks was up, we were flown then to Christmas Island. <clears throat> The worst place in the world. Would never go back if you paid me. No women, only women crabs. 50 million of them every night come out to see us. All on the tarmac roads. So we just drove our lorry for them and smashed them up. On our way to the cinema. Remember the film that came out in 1958? It was called Pal Joey, Frank Sinatra. Two fabulous women. Can't think of they were now. We went twice to see it. Mainly because there were no women on the island. And after 11 months without seeing a woman, you go anywhere to see a woman. Like we did, to the cinema. After spending 11 months on the island, I was eventually shipped home. My mother didn't tell me she'd moved. That's a joke, a comedian tells that joke. But I'm not telling a joke. She actually moved and never told me. After a brief bollocking for not telling me, I was welcomed home. She hadn't seen me for 11 months or three weeks. Pleased to see me. Still the same old mum. And that is my end of the army experience. And there's a photo of me. Look, you know how to see that photo of me? You know how to see that? That's me in the army, look. 18 years of age. As I did privately, I did finish up a corporal. Which everyone did in the army. You eventually, long you stayed on, you eventually got Lance Corporal, and then you got corporal, and then you were slung out. I was on one pound ten shillings a week, old money. And if I sent ten shillings home to my mother, which I did do, the government also sent a ten shillings, so she got a pound. Because I didn't, my father had long past gone. My father left when I was four years of age. So my mother bought me and my sister up on her own, and uh, that pound a week was very handy to her. Although I lost ten bob, it didn't matter to me. I, I was in the army, I was well, well fed and watered. Cigarettes were 50 pence, about eight pence. A tin of 50 players, senior service. Booze was cheap, we had a naffy to go to, so everything was cheap. So we didn't need any money, really. So that was me now, back to work. I thought as a plumber. But having spent two years in the army, and speaking to a nice Jewish fellow I met, who was also doing his two years, he told me I'd never get a living, I'd get a living as a plumber, but I'd never become rich. So I listened to him, because he, he was quite a wealthy boy. And I thought, well, I'm not going to be a plumber all my life. Get my hands dirty, smothered in petrol and putty. So I decided to become a salesman. And sure enough, I took my first job. I went to an interview. Suddenly, Electrolux Hoovers around on the door. Everybody said, you're mad. You can't sell them on the door. Well, I sold them. And I sold them too well. Within three weeks, they offered me the job as a manager. And after six weeks, I took over as the area manager. And after six months, I owned the place. And then, as normal, the government put an end to that. They allowed shops to sell the machines cheaper than we were selling them. So that put the end of that firm. They went bust. So I was now a proper businessman. I went to the car trade after that. Selling cars, second-hand cars as normal. Quite a lot of the boys were doing it at the time. Easy thing to do. Buy a car, put your price on, sell it, get your profit, get out. Good trade in Brighton at the time, in the early 60s. Very good trade. That's where I met old Tony, the slasher. My old hairdresser. He's still going, you know, he's my age nearly. Nice fellow. Still cuts me hair now, you know. Been cutting him for 60 years. Bless him. So that was me from the motor trade. The government ruined that as normal. Cut the, the deposits down from a quarter to a third. He couldn't sell cars now. So we went into the antique, antique trade. There we become millionaires. Loads and loads of money. You couldn't go wrong. Knocking on people's doors, buying all the antiques they didn't want to sell you and getting a good profit. Because I'll tell you lots of stories about the antique trade. I'd better not because some of them are naughty. You want naughty stories? <laughs> He's nodding his head, he must want naughty stories. If somebody had something worth a thousand pound, I'd always give him a tenner for it. Not like some of these knocker boys, they give him a pound. 
And I was quite generous. And I've remained in the antique trade ever since. In my younger days, I boxed at the Brighton Boys Club, which most people of the only good did. They did do a little story on me in the evening Argus a few years back, but they could only find 96 fights that I'd won. And when I said I won 132, they said, well, if they're not in the paper, you didn't win them. And I can assure you I won them. And a few more I didn't tell them about because I was being paid for it. While I was in the army, boxing booths used to come around the area and anyone could challenge anyone on their uh, uh, arena. If you could stand up for four rounds, you got five pounds. But I was the first one in there. And in fact, I went in there three times a week to get my five pounds, stand up with anyone with four rounds, I could. And after a time, they said, no, you've had your five pounds. You can't have no more. So that was the end of that little game. But anyway, I, I turned out quite a good boxer. That was in his a few times. Won a few area titles. Sussex, Surrey and Hampshire champion I was. Three years running. I've been the chairman of Sussex Ex-Boxers for the last 12 years. Where's that photo? I've got a nice photo there if you want to see it of our meeting there with our, our manager. Can you get a picture of that one? <clears throat> I'm the fellow in the white shirt. Can you see that one? Got it? And that's on the on there is Mr Eubanks. You know Mr Eubanks? But we get we have a monthly meeting, the second Sunday in every month. Get together all the old boxers and uh, have a few drinks and have a raffle and raise a few quid. But that's why I've got in the Sussex ex boxers to help any ex boxers that are on bad times or, or they're ill, we're always there to bail them out. Provided they've been a Sussex ex boxer, we'll look after them. They could always come to us for a few quid. Oh, the region, yeah, we've got the region. Oh, we're all in our, our semi golden suits, as I used to call them. He's going to get measured up as suits. I always remember it cost eight pounds a suit in them days. We used to pay half a quid a week for 16 weeks and we got our suit. Lovely double breasted Italian suit. All went up the region looking for the birds. A region reunion, which I go to quite often, and it's quite a, quite a good get together. Usual thing, plenty of drinks, nice buffy lined up, lined up and uh, we all enjoy ourselves. Good night out once a year. But I, every time I go, I never see any of the girls. I used to see up the region when I was young, they must have all passed by. Or they've all got married and not allowed out, one or the other. Then I can get out, why can't they get out? They might be pleased to see me after 60 years. Right, anything else you'd like to know about me?